Hello and welcome to the Barry Moore. We're doing about 500 words each on five different swamp biomes over five videos. This is our fourth, although I glitched and have already released the fifth. The Barry Moor is a small swamp. It is part of the Great Darbish River Delta, a river of incredible significance that I will definitely maybe develop sometime. It's hot here, totally tropical. Hot in the summer, crazy hot. Hot in the winter, I guess that means it doesn't really have a winter. Oh, and it's humid all the time. And don't try to talk to the locals about snow. They will think you're nuts. There is a rainy season, actually two, with a hurricane season in between and a thunderstorm season on the other side. The weird part about average rainfall in hurricane prone areas, it really screws up the averages. That 90 centimeters that you saw on the title card, it doesn't count the big daddies of storms. A single Category 4 can easily drop an additional 60 centimeters in just a day or two. Same thing with the wind. It's usually not bad. Flat calm a lot of the time, just when you need a breeze the most. You know, to break up that humidity. Then Mother Nature comes along with a 200 kilometer blast, and there go the in-laws. The Barry Moor is an inhabited swamp with a few thousand people living on the shore of the Drew River. And if it's not obvious, which I know it's not, it's the Drew River spreading out into the coastal lowlands that feeds the Barry Moor and the Darbish as a whole. Yeah, I know, throwing a lot of names out there, but this is a short video. There's not going to be a test later. You'll be okay. Most of these people are off the main channels and extremely isolated, living in wooden open window shacks supported on stilts. They exist well below the poorest nation's poverty level. They exist by subsistence fishing and can occasionally sell magical ingredients to passing river traffic. However, there isn't much traffic and nobody really likes to stop here. It's the kind of community where strangers disappear and locals get accused of cannibalism. You can fill this place with your weirdest NPCs and give your PCs a reason to visit. Realistically, they might very well run into a happy little family where grandma is a green hag. There's going to be a line of catfish heads on the fence posts, and little Luke has a pet skunk. Don't ask what's in the shack. Another way to have a little fun is by building this place into somebody's backstory. Then see if your player can pull off a sense of embarrassment when his adventuring friends find out just how weird his childhood was. Away from the river, you have plenty of room for whatever kind of monsters you want to populate the place with. Could be as simple as flail snails. In fact, you could create a tame version that the locals use for transport. You could put an old church deep in the moor dedicated to jewel becks. It could be occupied by some cult types and a hydroloth or two. I don't know if you noticed, but there are encounter charts by biome in the back of Mordenkainen's. Says here you could run into anything from a Varagul or Venom Trolls to the Nabasu or a Nagpa. As usual, I recommend you always take those random encounter charts and customize them to your needs. Figure out how everybody fits together. Plan ahead. That's always the key. The Barry Moor is thick and foggy. In other words, you could have point-blank encounters with a number of things lurking in the muck. Hey, what is that over there? A guy in a boat or a hydra? Can't tell from here. Better get closer. You could give your whole party disadvantage on initiatives or perception checks, or however you're running surprise these days. On the other hand, a party that becomes familiar with the swamp over a few levels might start laying some ambushes on their own. In the spirit of short videos, that's going to be it for now. Now I took a quick look at this uh, outro, and it is already way outdated. Uh, it says here that we've got uh, one more of these videos to go, and I'm feeling salty. That's not true, but it is sort of reverse foreshadowing, because we, we did the mangrove swamps, remember? Uh, it says that, in the meantime, I hope you all have a good week, and that is very true. It says that we've relapsed into a borderline hot, in, excuse me, into some borderline hot weather. That is also true, but it pretty much broke yesterday. Tomorrow's supposed to be much cooler. Really looking forward to it. Uh, the heat's got to break eventually, right? Hey, I was right. Uh, leave me a comment, as usual, and tell me about your early fall. It says also that Oklahoma State is 3-0. How's your team doing? Well, Oklahoma State is now 3-1, and and we might not be doing so well. To finish things out, I want to tell you that I love you all very much, and I hope you have a great rest of the week. Cheers.